hello and welcome to Diecast Restos for another epic Matchbox Convoy truck build. My name is Jason and this is the CY3 Peterbilt tractor and container trailer combo. These were first seen in 1982 carrying the old style Federal Express or FedEx branding. I set out on this build fairly directionless. I just wanted to do another big rig build, whether that be a restoration, resto mod or full custom. Obviously you'll see what direction I ultimately took at the end of the video, but stick around to come on this build journey with me. What I did want to try to do was to keep the Federal Express branding, which quickly ruled out a full custom featuring modified containers. I really liked the retro aesthetic of the old logo, so incorporating that and continuing with it felt like the right thing to do. I couldn't tell when these FedEx convoys were discontinued, but here's a fresh one in its original box. And here is a Peterbilt 359 on which the cab casting is based. You may remember from my last convoy build, I chose to restore two Peterbilts. One was the original long haul from the pre-Convoy 900 series. The other was a Peterbilt nearly identical to the long haul, only carrying official licensing instead of the generic name and having an extra compartment tagged on the body. Both were based or loosely based on the Peterbilt 289 single drive tractor. This casting is representative of the dual drive triaxle 359. While visually similar in design to each other, this casting is wildly different to the single drive. This has an interior seating a driver which also forms the attachments for the stacks. It therefore has a far better clear window piece. The base is quite similar, simply modified to house that extra axle. But the rooftop hosts the most notable changes, losing the beacons of old or attachable air horns of the long haul replacing them with an array of lights and cast in air horns. Now it's time to paint strip to get this build well underway. The Peterbilt cab casting was given the code MB106. Not only was it part of the convoy line on off until 2002, but it was part of the main line as well. It was given number 43 in the US only range, with the rest of world continuing to receive the 040 Steam Loco. This lasted for 1982 and 1983 only. The very similar Peterbilt tanker, cement and quarry trucks and wrecker all remained in the main line after this point. In 1967, the first 289-359 Peterbilt trucks were released on sale. They would ultimately replace the 281 conventional that was discontinued in 1976. 289-359 models continued in production until 1987 when the 379 replaced it as Peterbilt's flagship model. Despite being replaced, the 359 remained a popular choice amongst truckers. Its huge engine compartment meant that it could be spec to almost any order with any combination of engine and transmission. This meant they could be easily utilised for specialist trucking such as logging. For this reason, resale values remained high due to the numerous ways of customising a rig. It had an aluminium body too, which meant that corrosion was less of a problem. But best of all for truckers was that it looked good, with its long hood, giant breather canisters imposing grill and proud twin stacks. I talked about the history of the Peterbilt company in detail in my previous convoy video, so do check that out if you haven't yet. But for the next 10 minutes or so, I'll talk about the modifications, repairs and improvements I'll be making to my big rig. You'll have just seen me rubbing down where I'd rather stupidly drilled through the entire rivet post and out the other side of the casting. I think this may be the first time that I've done such a thing. Total amateur's mistake that. It's easily fixable but just meant that more time was needed to be invested in this build. Now though I'm re-trimming the plastic base in Molotow Chrome. This was needed as most of the original plating had worn away over time and my glued repair for the fender was in need of covering. The fuel tanks and steps are also covered. 
Next, I prime the cab casting in white, ready to be returned to the stock white FedEx truck colouring. You'll note there's still a hole from the middle rivet post still evident. This was too tricky to fill and smooth off, so I have other plans for that. These flatbed trailers I think are lacking some realism. So I'm using my new friend styrene sheet to craft some mud flaps and an extended rear guard. In my long haul transporter video, the low bed trailer has far, far better cast detailing than this one. That has a winch cast in as well as a registration plate, long vehicle and TIR signs and turn signals. It also had some nice textured metal grating, so this one needed to up its game. I primer that additional section and then paint the cab white. Now just a few words on FedEx. Federal Express were founded in Little Rock, Arkansas by Frederick Smith in 1971. By 1973, operations had moved to Memphis, with the situation of Memphis International Airport a main reason for the move. This would allow for a system of urgent deliveries to be made via air freight. The company experienced rapid growth in the late 70s and 1980s and became the first shipping company to use a computer managed system in 1978. By 1983, Federal Express topped $1 billion in sales. The company rebranded FedEx in 1994 to adopt its long held nickname. The company remains one of the largest shipping organizations in the world. Anyway, back to my detailing. I gave the interior piece a coat of primer so that I could improve on the basic chrome plated plastic. The stacks are re-chromed before I turn my attention to the driver. While he will be mostly hidden within the cramped cab, I thought it would be nice just to add a little interest to the piece. His black hair quickly took over the full seats. I thought that I would give him a bright green jacket and a pair of blue jeans to help him stand out. I quite like that these castings had a driver rather than just an empty seat. It made the model that bit more interesting. The same interior and stack piece was also used for the tanker, tipper, cement mixer and wrecker units. Just in case you wondered, the base piece isn't a direct carbon copy of the older 289 or long haul. Aside from the modifications required for the extra axle, it also had a different license plate. For the trailer, I will be returning it back to its original black colour. The base layers will effectively be the first steps towards restoration. Until this point, where I spray the rear of the tractor a more realistic black. Then I can begin detailing these two parts. I start with the mud flaps, adding a little something to them. I next add in some chrome to act as the base for the tail lights. And a few small strips on the back and then the entirety of the sides will act as reflectors. I have to say this was a bit tedious for the trailer. As I said before, it's a bit bland to begin with and it's difficult to really spice it up a great deal. A dash of red sharpie does bring some colour to proceedings though. Next, I turn my attention to the cab, adding in a trio of circular taillight bases. A base coat is also applied for the Peterbilt logo on the side of the hood, as well as a coat for the breathers, air horns on top of the roof, and a pleasing chrome surround to the rooftop light array. Then I use my red again on the Peterbilt logo, as well as a touch of orange for those running lights. Some more red on the tail lights now before applying some more chrome across these cast in braces. It may look like it's close to done, but there's far more for me to do for this build, I can assure you. I've printed some Federal Express decals for the doors to make the cab look a bit more like company property. I'm not sure FedEx ever used the purple and orange line designs of Matchbox's original tampos for this casting anyway. But now I turn my attention to weathering, first with Citadel Gloss Null Oil. I used a frankly ludicrous quantity of Citadel on this truck. I suppose I'd better reveal my intentions now before I shock you with the mad actions I'm about to take. Well, maybe not mad, but a bit wild by my usual standards at least. I wanted this big rig to look road worn, something that had been on the road for many years without much care or attention paid to cleaning or maintaining it. Certainly something the employers wouldn't be proud of. I've even coated the green light jewelry wheels I'll be using in Citadel. I slather this on in all the places you'd expect to find dirt and dust on an old rig 
plus enhanced the casting lines in keeping with my usual rituals. I chose to go down this path as I wanted to break away from the clean custom look I often go for. I didn't fancy going quite as far as a post-apocalyptic Mad Max style build, but a bit dirty and rough around the edges I thought would suit this truck and trailer combo well. I also thought creating a rusty old set of shipping containers, which have spent years at sea, would look great. But so far so good for the cab. By contrast, there was far less to do on the trailer, which is going to simply be an accessory in this build the further it goes. And now I start on the two containers. I hadn't done much with these until this point. I don't really think FedEx would even utilise shipping containers in their fast paced mostly airborne business. But I really liked the quality, size and general condition of these side logo prints. I didn't want to lose them and then regret it. So that's how my mind was made up for this project. Keep the containers original with some weathering, a similar but improved trailer and a road worn cab. So for the first time I am using weathering pigments to really help age this build. I'm using two different shades today, Dark Ashes Grey for the smoky dusty look and a shade called Earth by Allclad. The Earth will act as dirt and rust and will hopefully be used to good effect on the containers. I didn't have anything to hand to help set the pigment, but I did clear coat over it. The pressure of the can will have removed some of the loosely attached pigment, but I did spray from a distance and the majority remained. And you know what? I think it is bringing the trailer to life. Nothing like a bit of faux rust to bring a casting to the fore. The stacks are brushed in grey and the rest of the base a grey and brown mix. But we are reaching the closing stages of this build now, and I've saved the best weathering until last, the containers. I went over the entire container in grey first, before I dumped a ton of brown on it for the rusty seafarer look. The changes are most noticeable on the container doors, with all of the small details of the hinges and locks. We'll see how all of it turned out shortly. Now then it is time to put it all together. I fetch my cab section and drop in the cleanest part of this build, the window. We can't have this dude driving dangerously now can we, even if the rest of his rig is a complete state. I then put in the green light jewelies that I've smothered in Citadel. The base is then last to be fitted to the Peterbilt 359 replica, which is secured with three screws. The trailer is relatively simple, with the two sets of jewelies lowered in and secured beneath a small plastic retainer. This is attached by two M2 screws. Well, this is how my Matchbox Convoy CY3 happened to look in what feels like an age ago. Shockingly, it was complete but damaged. The cab had a snapped fender and some bent stacks. It and the trailer had lost a lot of paint through playwear, but luckily it had retained my favourite feature, these FedEx containers. I just had to incorporate them and their retro designs into my custom build. So I went for a road worn theme and here it is now. The whole thing has been dirtied and rustified with a combination of weathering pigment and Citadel gloss null oil. Nowhere has this been more effective than on the container door ends of these two Federal Express shipping containers. Despite being a bit anonymous, the weathering had a positive effect on the trailer alongside the awesome green light jewelry wheels and custom mud flaps. The cab got the same treatment and I just love how rough it looks, a proper brawler. Road worn, uncared for, but a brute of a machine. Like my last convoy build, there's a series of gratuitous photographs I've taken of the truck for this video outro. Make sure you stick around for that to see more angles of the Peterbilt 359 trailer and containers. Thanks ever so much for watching, especially if you sat through this whole ordeal. Be sure to click like and click subscribe if you haven't yet. So sit back, relax and enjoy the slideshow. Cheers and keep on trucking.